What is up, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Three and Data here on the Empty Bench Podcast Network. Make sure you hit subscribe below and follow our socials at the Three and D ETB and at ETB Network. On this episode, we're going to have a ton of stuff to talk about. Anthony Davis just signed his big extension with the Los Angeles Lakers. We'll give you some information about the contract, my reactions, and what it potentially means for the Lakers coming into this season. Ricky Rubio also taking um, citing mental health to take a little break from his NBA career. We'll be going over that. And then all the craziness that's been going on in the college world with the Pac-12 realignment and several teams moving up a conference. There's a whole bunch of movements that we'll be going over and covering before this basketball season gets started and how the Pac-12 is pretty much falling apart. So hope everybody's doing well. Um, first things first, a ton of weird information has come out about the Anthony Davis contract with the Los Angeles Lakers. But first things first, as everyone's heard, Anthony Davis and the Lakers agree on a massive extension. Uh, Davis signed a three-year, $186 million extension with the Lakers that adds up to $62 million average annual value. And it's the richest contract in NBA history per year. Um, obviously, during last episode, we talked about the Jalen Brown contract, which was the richest total money over the five years. It was five years, $200 million. Um, He's going to be getting paid like right around 60 a year, too. But Anthony Davis signed an incredibly insane contract. Um, and this basically is just showing you what the NBA is headed to, in my opinion. Um the stars are starting to get paid more and more. The salary cap keeps going up year by year. And we're already at the point now that several star players are making 60 mil a year. So, and it's just going to keep getting more and more, the more that, uh, that the NBA becomes a global enterprise and keeps becoming more and more famous and getting more and more uh, viewership and all that kind of stuff. But the interesting thing that came to my attention um is the total money that Anthony Davis will actually be bringing in out of the $62 million a year. So Andrew Petcash, who is a sports money analyst um, on Twitter, he took to Twitter to basically give you a rundown of how much money Anthony Davis is actually going to be bringing home with uh, with this new three-year $186 million contract. So It'll, it equates to $62 million a year, but he plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. And as many people know, and if you're a California resident, you know better than, than others that California has huge state income tax. So what he will be getting taxed um, out of the 62, out of the 62 million that he'll be making per year, 22.9 million of that will be going to federal tax, um, which you'll have to pay no matter, you know, what state you're in. And obviously when it comes to uh, millionaires and all that kind of stuff, they're going to have to be, have to pay more. Then he's get, he, then he gets taxed an extra $6 million for the NBA escrow tax. Um, that's pretty much the, what the NBA does in order to kind of extend players contracts to avoid them going broke in the future, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm probably giving a terrible definition of the escrow tax, but if you, you know, if you know it or if you want to look up more information about it, um, the NBA does this with all of their big contracts. Um, so they're only taking out about six million dollars per year from Anthony Davis contract. And then an additional four point one million will be taken out from California state tax. Um, and obviously, California has one of the most state income tax, uh, one of the highest state income tax in the country. New York is another one. Uh for instance, Texas and Florida are two that, do, that don't have any state income tax. So if he had signed this contract with the Dallas Mavericks, he'd be he'd be pocketing an additional $4.1 million um, per year. But instead of that, that goes to the California tax. And then agent fee, $1.8 million. Obviously, um, you know, a certain amount goes to your agent for negotiating the contract. And then $1.8 million goes to the jock tax. And that's also an interesting one that kind of sounds made up but it goes towards a few different things um and that that's an additional that's an additional tax that most players deal with and then 1.4 million dollars going to the fica to their fica tax slash medicare so that's that's a typical um money that gets deferred obviously for anybody 
Um, you know, if you're, you'll be making Medicare, all that kind of stuff, you know, people get certain money deferred for their 401k, all that kind of stuff. You know, this is, this is definitely not a finance podcast. So, uh, so I'm probably butchering a lot of this, but it's, but you know, the gist of it. So that's the amount of money that he's going to be getting taxed per year. So that comes out to 60, $62 million in salary. He'll be pocketing $24 million per year. And a lot of people, obviously, that's a, a whole lot of money. That's like an insane amount of money. Um, I think anybody would take would take that amount of money. But um, when you see the number 62 million, that's going to go against the Lakers cap space. This is just kind of a an interesting um, reminder, I would say, that you know the money that these insane contracts that a lot of these stars are getting and stuff. Um, only a portion of it they're actually going to be able to pocket when it comes down to taxes, all that kind of stuff. You know, we hear a contract like that, and you in your brain automatically goes to, okay, he'll be pocketing 186 million dollars, but that's really not the case. So it's it's pretty interesting. I mean, it, that's a big fall off. Twenty, he, he paid, signed a 62 million dollar a year contract, and he, he comes home with 24 million dollars, um, and he's going to come away with 72 million dollars in the three years out of the 186. But it's, that's just the way it goes, and it's pretty. It's a pretty interesting thing to you know kind of look deeper into the money behind all these sports and what actually you know is going into their pockets. But besides that, Anthony Davis and the Lakers agreeing on that huge extension. Um, this was, it was it's a very interesting extension too because both him and LeBron were able to become free agents after this season. They both had player options going into the 24, 25 season. So now Anthony Davis is locked up. Um, he won't be a free, he doesn't have the opportunity to become a free agent now after next season. LeBron still does until we hear that he signed an extension. He's got a player option after this year. And a lot of people are obviously going to be talking about how he may opt out of that and try to um, spend the last years of his career playing with Bronny, whoever, um, whoever ends up drafting Bronny in the 2024 NBA draft. But Anthony Davis' contract is kind of just another example of the way that it's headed. And Jalen Brown made an insane amount of money, and now Anthony Davis is going to be making the same. And jumping over from that, uh, the Ricky Rubio situation. So news just broke this weekend uh, that Ricky Rubio is putting his career on hold for mental health issues. And obviously, I'm a big advocate of it, and I love – seeing when players are vulnerable and open up about real life issues such as this. And Ricky Rubio is the latest to come out about this. And a lot of more and more athletes have been, have become more open to explain their mental health issues and stuff. And, you know, we, we sometimes look at these players as like, as superhuman and like superheroes basically, but um, you know, they're, they're humans too. And everybody's got, issues that they have to deal with. So Ricky Rubio put out a statement um, this past week, this past weekend saying, I've decided to stop my professional activity to take care of my mental health. I want to thank all the support I have. I have received from the Spanish national team, which he's currently playing for. Um, he's under contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers as well, heading into this season. And I've received from the Spanish national team to understand my decision. Rubio said, Today, family makes makes more sense than ever. Thank you. I would ask you that my privacy be respected so that I can face these moments and be able to give more information when the time is right. So he had so he didn't give up to give too much information. Um, de definitely probably dealing with a family issue or something like that. But he's putting his career on hold. He's under contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers right now, heading into the season. So we so the news will will definitely take a little bit of a hit. Um, on his on his um, status heading into the season to see if he ends up missing some games or um, you know what actually happens from that. But we have the FIBA games that are that have been going been underway throughout the summer, and he was on the Spanish national team, so he'll be stepping away. It seems like um, for a little while. So so Ricky Rubio uh, ju is just the latest to talk to break out about the mental health um, of. Players, you know, Kevin Love was a big one. DeMar DeRozan was one as well. And definitely very interesting to see. Very cool to see. Um, and, you know, ho hoping for speedy recovery 
with whatever he's dealing with and so hope to see him back on the floor soon. Um, jumping over from that, we've got a ton of news in the college basketball world. Um, you know, the NBA news has, has been a little bit light, but we're jumping over to some college basketball. So the Pac-12 has begun to completely go under. So not only has this past weekend the news came out that more schools were leaving the Pac-12, but there had already been a ton of schools that were on their way out um, of the Pac-12. And this is just, once again, um, another thing that's that's going to start putting the Pac-12 under. So Oregon and Washington um, it would have both both earlier um, before the season, have before um, the last couple of weeks, have decided that they're going to leave the Pac-12 for the Big Ten starting in the 2024-25 season. And then just recently, uh, Oregon and Washington were the newest ones to decide to to leave, and then Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah all had already said that they're going to be leaving the the um the Pac-12 to go to the Big 12 starting in the 24-25 season. So this isn't for this upcoming season, but it's effective right after the season. Um, and UCLA and USC had already announced that they're going to the Big Ten, that they'll be leaving the Pac-12 to go to the Big Ten in the 24-25 season. So that's eight schools now that are set to leave the Pac-12 after this season and join the Big Ten and the Big 12. That leaves four schools behind in the Pac-12 now. Uh, four, only four schools will remain in the Pac-12 in the 24-25 season, which is absolutely crazy. Um, I'm sure if the Pac-12 wants to stay around, they're going to try their hardest to bring in some more schools for next season. But California, Oregon State, Stanford, and Washington State remain the only four that are committed to the Pac-12. Um, and once again, Oregon and Washington headed to the Big Ten. They announced this pe this past weekend. Um, Colorado, Arizona, and Arizona State, and Utah head to the Big 12 and UCLA and USC had a while ago announced that they're headed to the Big 10. So Pac-12 is completely falling under the Conference of Champions, as Bill Walton likes to say, is, is really not a Conference of Champions. And we've been saying that for a while. So with this news that came out, the Pac-12 did release a statement um, and they said today's news incredi is incredibly disappointing for student athletes, fans, alumni, and staff of the Pac-12 who cherish the over 100-year history, tradition, and rivalries of the Conference of Champions. We remain focused on securing the best possible future for each of our member universities. So the only ones left, California, Oregon State, Stanford, and Washington State, uh, They most of them also put out statements this past weekend, hearing that Oregon and Washington are now going to leave on top of the other six schools that had already announced that they were going to leave. And basically saying that they're disappointed and they're um, questioning the integrity of the schools and their desire to, you know, compete and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's really getting ugly. It really is getting ugly. And it's amazing how within several months that one of the power six conferences in college basketball. I mean, this, this is going to be effective for college basketball and college football. So all your college football fans out there, it's going to be the same thing this upcoming season. The, all these schools will still be in the PAC 12, but starting the year after all eight of those schools are going to be leaving the PAC 12 for the big 10, and the big 12. Um, and it's incredible how much the big 10, and the big 12 are, are growing too. And we'll get to that in a few, but the, it's really become a bloodbath. Um, with the Pac-12, they they went from being they've been on a little bit of a decline over the last several years. They haven't put as many teams in the tournament. Um, they've been overlapped by the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, the ACC, even the Big East at times uh, in college basketball. But the to see all these schools heading out to try to join the Big Ten to join the Big Twelve is just is honestly crazy to me. Um, I would have never expected that all these schools were going to leave, and it's it's tough to imagine the Pac-12 staying together, to be completely honest with you, because they're going to have to. I don't even know what they're going to have to do through to go into this season, but they're going to have to um, look hard for schools to replace them. Because in the 24-25 season, the, you can't go into that season with four schools being 
um in the conference and that says that's it's not a conference there's no conference that has that little of schools i mean there's i don't even know if there's a conference that has less than 10 schools uh in in division one let alone four schools so if the pac-12 wants to stay around and continue its competitiveness they're going to have to go hard for to get some schools to join the pac-12 for next season and i don't know if that if that can be done I really don't know if that can be done. Um, you know, there had been rumors that Gonzaga would would leave the WCC for the Pac-12. Um, made sense for them because they're a West Coast school. But the thing that always held in their way was that the Pac-12 demands that you have a football program on top of a basketball program, and Gonzaga does not have a football program. So um, I wonder if the Pac-12 kind of gets rid of that rule and let's Gonzaga join at least for basketball so they can become um, a bigger conference in the basketball world than what they than what they are for next season. Because also those four schools that are left to are not very competitive, not very great basketball schools, California, Oregon State, Stanford, and Washington State. I mean, those, those four teams are usually at the bottom of the Pac-12 year after year. Um, very rarely you see any of those teams as powerhouses. So may, sometimes Oregon State – I will give Oregon State some credit. They 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 compete sometimes, but Cal, Stanford, and Washington State have not been competitive in a long time. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see what what the Pac-12 ends up becoming. And you know, it used to be the Pac-10 grew to the Pac-12 when they added 12 schools, and now you know the Big Ten and Big 12 have have grown a ton um, over the past couple of years, and they're going to grow even more. So Pac-12 is completely going under. It's really sad to see, and it's going to be interesting to see what what they decide to do for the for the 24-25 season. Um, they still have all their schools there for this upcoming season, for this upcoming college basketball season, but it's, it's they're going to have to make some big decisions for the upcoming year because I just don't see the Pac-12. I just don't see how they can go into the season with four schools. Um, it went, and when conference play starts, you know they're not going to – be just restricted to playing the, the each three teams. I mean, they'd end up having to play each team like five times or so, um, each school. So it's 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 going to be it's going to be a very interesting thing to see what the Pac-12 officials to what the what the president of the NCAA decides to do, and um, if they're if they're able to add schools. I mean, they are the Pac-12, so if they look at some of the other West Coast schools that are in lower conferences and tries to recruit them to the Pac-12, maybe makes the transition a little bit easier. A lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of conferences have rules on transitions and stuff that you can't make the tournament or you can't make the uh, conference tournament for so, so amount of years until um, with part as part of your transition and stuff like that. I wonder if PAC 12 kind of let, lets that up a little bit um, and but lets them join them. But PAC 12, this is insane news. And um you know, conference league realignment is strong <coughs> and heavy in the um, in the college basketball world, and we're just chipping the top of the iceberg with that. Because on top of that, the Big Ten and the Big Twelve are growing a ton, and um, obviously, with all those schools joining, it, they're going to be absolutely insane. The Big Ten will now move to eighteen schools in the twenty four twenty five season. Um, they're going to obviously be joined by um Oregon, Washington, UCLA and USC, those four schools will all be joined joining them in the 24-25 season. And on top of that, um you're going to have all the rest of the schools that are already in the in the uh Big 10, Indiana, Maryland, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State, Rutgers, Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Northwestern, Purdue, and Wisconsin. So they're most likely going to tr- going to divide into two different divisions as well um, in the Big Ten. I think there's going to be an East Coast and a West Coast division where, um, you know, the schools in the Midwest part of the country and the West part of the country, you know, like uh, Nebraska and USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, they'll probably all be in the same division, whereas the East Coast schools like Rutgers, and Ohio State, um, and if you want to consider uh, Illinois East Coast or um, and Maryland, and all those schools will be on the East Coast division. But 
it's crazy. The Big Ten jump is going to be jumping to 18 schools now starting the 24-25 season. They're already at 14, but they'll have four of the Pac-12 teams joining them, which will be absolutely insane. And then on the other hand, the Big 12 will be moving to 16 schools. Um, they'll have two two of the big of the um they'll have two teams from the Pac-12 joining them or four teams from the Pac-12 joining them, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah. But they'll also have a bunch of other, um, a couple of other interesting teams that are leaving that have announced. Uh, Oklahoma and Texas are both leaving the SEC, um, what, or both leaving the Big 12 for the SEC. Um, and BYU has already announced that they're going to leave the WCC for the Big 12 starting this season. So the Big 12 is already in realignment. There's a there's a few schools that are already set to join the Big 12 this season. Um, Oklahoma and Texas are leaving the Big 12. They're going to be joining the SEC, but they're replacing them with BYU. Uh, UCF, Houston, and Cincinnati are all leaving the American Conference, and they're joining the Big 12 this year. So those are all teams that there's a lot of – a, there's a lot of realignment starting this season for the Big 12. And then on top of that, the Big 12 will also be adding those four Pac-12 schools uh, starting in the 24-25 season, uh, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah. Um, that'll bring the, um, the, the Big 12 to a total of 16 schools in the 24-25 season. Um, and those 16 schools in 24-25 will be Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, all leaving the Pac-12 for the Big 12. Baylor, BYU, who's leaving the WCC this season. UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston, who are all leaving the American this season to join the Big 12. And then Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, TCU, Texas Tech, and West Virginia, who have always been Big 12 schools. So, it's so it's pretty crazy that starting next year, um, the Big 12 is going to move to 16 teams. They're obviously losing two big teams with Oklahoma and Texas leaving the Big 12 to join the SEC, but they're replacing them this season with three American teams, American conference teams that have been juggernauts of the end of college basketball. I mean, Houston, Cincinnati have had some good programs and Houston has had a great program over the last several years. I mean, they've been a, a number one seed in the country for a long time um, over the past couple of years. Uh, Kelvin Sampson has completely turned that program around. And then Cincinnati has, has always been in and out of competitiveness in co the college basketball world. UCF, on the other hand, um, goes in and out as well. They're usually not extremely competitive, but um they do they do a pretty decent job um of staying of competing and you know sneaking into the tournament every once in a while but Houston and Cincinnati these are two big jumps for them that are starting this season they're jumping to the Big 12 from the American Conference we saw a couple of years ago UConn leave the American Conference to rejoin the Big East which they were always a part of for a long time when then they decided to move to the American Conference so the American Conference is going through a lot of realignment as well um but and especially this season with three of their top schools leaving, um, but they'll be bringing in a few other schools from lower conferences that we'll go over in a couple in a couple of minutes. But it's the Big Ten and the Big Twelve growing a ton. Um, BYU is an interesting one to join the Big Twelve. They're joining the Big Twelve this season. They're leaving the WCC. So the WCC is going to be Gonzaga, St. Mary's. Um, Gonzaga and St. Mary's are going to run that that conference. BYU is always somewhat competitive as well, but it's now there's one more competitive team out of it. So Gonzaga and St. Mary's are you know kind of going to go back and forth um, throughout that conference, and it'll be interesting to see if uh, one of those schools jumps for the Pac-12 or gets um, an invite to to join the Pac-12 or something like that. But um, BYU going to the Big 12, I think it, I think it'll be a little bit of a readjustment for them. Um, it may take some time before they're very competitive because w from the WCC to the Big 12 is a big jump. And um, I wouldn't say BYU is a consistently dominant team. They always have a good program. They always they sneak into the tournament a lot. Um, so occasionally they'll win a game or two in the tournament. But for the most part, you know, they're not Gonzaga. They're not St. Mary's who are consistent top 25 schools who get ranked in the top 25 at least a few times throughout every single season. 
Um, so they'll be joining the Big 12, and there's a lot of competitiveness. And I think that Houston, Cincinnati, too, are going to jump into the Big 12 and shake things up a lot. Um, and then, obviously, starting next year after this season, Arizona is going to make things interesting. They always have a good program. Arizona State sometimes has a good program. Colorado is pretty decent. Utah sometimes has a decent team. Add that in with Baylor and Kansas and all in Texas Tech um, and all the usual uh, college basketball schools that run the Big 12. The Big 10 and the Big 12 are going to run college basketball. I mean, the, that's they've started to completely take over college basketball within the past four or five years. Um, they've been consistently the, the two best conferences. And with adding these schools, they're just going to they're going to grow into even bigger conferences. Um, that are going that are going to be difficult to take down. I mean, the Big East is starting to grow a little bit. Obviously, Rick Pitino joined St. John's, and all of the recruits that St. John's was able to bring in is going to be a big thing. Um, for the Big East to stay competitive, Marquette we saw was was a tough out. UConn obviously won the national championship this past year. Um, so the Big East is going to stick around. The SEC is going to be tough too. I mean, the SEC you got Kentucky, you got Auburn, you got Tennessee. Um, you got all of those teams, and then they're going to be adding starting this season Oklahoma and Texas too. And Texas always has a good team. Oklahoma sometimes puts out a good team. Uh, so the SEC is going to be good, but the Big Ten and the Big Twelve are going to be running college basketball, and this just is more evidence to that. Um, the Big Ten is going to be eighteen schools now in de- heading into the twenty four twenty five season, and the Big Twelve is going to be sixteen schools heading into the 24, 25 season. So going to be very, very interesting to see. Um, Those are the top guns in the realignment, but there's a lot of other stuff that kind of got swept over. That's worth noting the other realignments for this upcoming season. Um, There's a lot of teams that are switching divisions, um, switching conferences starting this season. And, um, you know, with Cincinnati, Houston, UCF leaving the American, they also add six conference USA schools. So first off, the American Conference. The American Conference is going to lose Cincinnati, Houston, and UF, UCF this year, who are all going to the Big 12. But they're adding six conference USA schools. Charlotte, Florida Atlantic, who made the Final Four this past year. North Texas, Rice, Alabama, Birmingham, and University of Texas, San Antonio, UTSA. Those six are all joining the American Conference this year and replacing the juggernauts that left, basically. Um, they, which makes it, it's going to make the things all really interesting, too, because the American Conference has been one of the better non power six conferences, um, in college basketball. But losing some of their big names like UConn a few years ago and now Houston and Cincinnati. Um, They're going to be replacing with Florida Atlantic and Florida Atlantic should be a tough team again this year. They're bringing everybody back who they had on their final four run this past season. They extended um, their head coach, Dusty May for I think like a 10 year contract or something like something crazy like that. Um, So they, they should be the favorites to probably come out of the American conference (laughs) now now with Houston um, leaving and heading to the big 12. But um, this, those, all of those schools, are going to be headed there. So now the full list of the American Athletic Conference is as follows: UAB, um, East East Carolina, Florida Atlantic, which is leaving the Conference USA, Memphis, University of uh, South Florida, Charlotte, who's new, North Texas, who's also new, Rice, who's also new, SMU, who's always been the American, Temple, UTSA, who's new, Tulane, Tulsa, and Wichita State. Um, so that's going to be the new American conference starting this season, you know, leaving out a few guys behind, but it's bringing in a, a few different new schools. So the conference USA loses six, but they're also gaining, um, a bunch of different schools as well too. Um, so obviously the, these all add up. So as I said before, the big 12, um, is adding a bunch of American schools, but the American is adding a bunch of Conference USA schools, and then Conference USA is adding a bunch of other schools. So the Conference USA to replace um, the Charlotte, Florida Atlantic, North Texas, Rice, UAB, and UTSA, they're also um, going to be bringing in six schools as well, who uh, one of them doesn't start until the 24-25 season, but starting this season, 
They're bringing in Liberty, Jacksonville State, um, and Kennesaw State starting in 24-25, all coming from the Atlantic Sun Conference. Um, they'll also be bringing in New Mexico State from the WAC and Sam Houston State from also from the WAC. So they'll be bringing in four teams starting this year, <coughs> and one of them being um, starting in the 24-25 season. And uh, so the Conference USA will replenish the teams that they lost. Um, they lost some of their better teams, obviously, to who jumped to a better conference, the American Conference. But um, Conference USA will have a way to um, to replace them. And then there's a couple of other very small, um, not so talked about moves uh, throughout college basketball. So Western Illinois is another team that's that's moving conferences. They're leaving the Summit Conference to go to the Ohio Valley Conference. Um, Lemoyne is jumping from Division Two to Division One, and they'll be joining the NEC, which has schools such as Sacred Heart, um, St. Francis of, of PA, um, LIU, and so on. Um, they, they're one of the lower down conferences in college basketball, but Lemoyne, who has decided to jump from Division Two to Division One, is going to be joining the NEC. And then Two schools are jump are falling back from Division One to Division Three, so St. Francis of Brooklyn and Hartford um, are both falling from Division One to Division Three. They've all they both decided to leave Division One and go all the way back to Division Three athletics, which is pretty crazy. I mean, Hartford, especially from Hartford too, because Hartford has actually put together some decent teams throughout its history. Um, Vin Baker, who was a longtime NBA veteran, played at at University of Hartford. Um, they so they've actually put together some solid teams in Division One. Uh, they were in like a somewhat decent conference as well, but they they took away all the funds of their athletic programs, which is really difficult to see. And the, all of their athletics are going to be Division Three now, and they were tired of paying the Division One tax. Um, I don't know what the money issue is at Hartford, but it definitely can't be good if they're falling back from division one to division three. And then the final one that's jump that's jumping this year is Campbell. Campbell's leaving the big South and they'll be joining the CAA uh, conference. So those are the smaller ones that are, aren't as interesting. You know, most, most people kind of brush over, but all worth noting that conference realignment is strong and as heavy as, as it's ever been. Um, in college basketball right now. It's absolutely crazy. We're going to see a ton of movement. And I think the, going back to the Pac-12 um, this past week, this past weekend with Oregon and Washington deciding to leave for the Big Ten just mm-hmm. kind of put makes a domino effect. And I think this is just the beginning too because the Pac-12 is going to be looking to add schools. Um, they only have four schools left the Pac-12. So they either fall under or they're going to try to add more schools. So I think we're going to be seeing more and more teams deciding to jump to different conferences. And, you know, if you're a big college football or college basketball fan, you find it difficult to follow along to uh, which team is in which conference. It's about to get even more difficult for you uh, with everybody jumping around and seeing where that goes. Um, But that's going to do it for today's episode. I want to thank everybody who tuned in to the empty the bench podcast network for another episode of the three and D once again, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and follow the social at the three and D ETB. We'll be putting out content all week in case you missed the entire episode. Um, and check out the entire episode here on YouTube. Give us a, a subscription, give us a like, give us a follow. Um, we're on everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Anything that you guys that you guys look at, we're on. Uh, so give us some love, and we'll be giving you guys more and more content, especially throughout the season. So it's still the off season in basketball, but um, there's always stuff going on. So this is the most up to date um, information that you guys can get, and follow us on our socials to follow along and you know get alerts for things that you might not have known um, and in the college basketball world and in the NBA world. Um, so we'll be put, and we'll, once again, we'll be putting out content all week. And, um, so make sure to like, and subscribe. I uh, hope everybody has a great rest of the week and thanks for tuning in. 
to another episode of the 3 and D.